Recording. All right. Um, I wanted to ask you, okay, you're somebody who's been in, quote, unquote, some real fights, and you've done martial arts. Did you use martial arts in real fights? Yes. I used all my martial arts moves in real fights that I've been in. Okay. What styles have you studied? Study Taekwondo, Judo, and I spent a small portion of time studying boxing, Western boxing. Okay. Why is it that you've been able to use what you know in fights and other people, anything other people have not been able to use their martial arts in real fights? I practice and put my time in a lot more than they have, so that's why they're not able to pull it off. So if somebody's not able to pull it off, do you think it's because they're taking a bad style or they got a bad teacher? Well, there's no such thing as bad style, but there is a such thing as a bad teacher. And there are such things as bad students. So what's a bad teacher? A bad teacher would be someone who's not really teaching you the martial order art. They're just feeding you bogus bull crap that will get you nowhere in a fight. And that will get you nowhere in the rank system, period. They just hand out ranks instead of actually teaching the people. Okay. Um, what's a bad student? Bad student is someone who's not enthusiastic, doesn't want to pay attention, doesn't want to come to class. They do come to class, they're not going to give you all the effort. They give you like 50% and that's about it. Okay, so what percentage of time have you spent in each, each state that you studied in Taekwondo and Judo and in boxing? In my Taekwondo, 70. In my Judo, 20%. In my boxing, 10%. Okay, so which one of those three did you borrow techniques from the most when you were fighting, did you use? What do you mean by borrow? And which one of those, from one of those three styles, which techniques did you use the most? Did you use Taekwondo techniques the most, Judo techniques the most, boxing techniques the most? Um, I Taekwondo the most. Have you ever done any kicks in a real fight? Yes. High kicks? High kicks, low kicks, medium kicks, all kicks. And why were you able to kick people in a fight? How, how, how is it that you've been able to use kicks in a fight? And a lot of people say you can't. You can't use high kicks. You can't kick above the waist. What, what made you different? I just, I just, I practice a lot in class. I practice my kicks in class the way they should have been practiced. So I was able to use them in a fight and on the street. If you practice your kicks, you'll be able to use them in a fight. It's that simple. All right. Um, have you ever dealt with anybody that had weapons? Yes, I have. What kind of weapons? Uh, I've been attacked with a board, been attacked with a stick, been attacked with a box cutter. Those three. Did you get uh, cut up real bad by the box cutter? I got cut by the box cut. I didn't cut up bad, but I got cut. Where'd you get cut? The right side of my cheek. Did it split your face open? No, nah, it almost did. I slipped it from boxing. So you managed to slip the box cutter, kind of like one of these motions? Yeah. All right, so you could leave out the way of the box cutter to keep your face. And then did you beat up the guy that had the box cutter? Yep. Now, how old were you when you got attacked by the guy with the... I know the answer to these questions, but how old were you when you got attacked by the guy with the box cutter? I was six years old. How old was he? He was eight. So you were six years old, you beat up an older child that attacked you with a box cutter? Yeah. What styles had you studied at that time? Taekwondo and a little bit of boxing. Mainly Taekwondo. Did you do any judo by then? Yes, I knew some judo by then, too. So I studied Taekwondo, Judo, and some boxing by then. So, now you keep going back to saying you studied Taekwondo, Judo, and boxing. Taekwondo, Judo, and boxing. Would you consider yourself a mixed martial artist? Yes. So, is it safe to say that MMA is the way to go? No. Why not? It, I mean, 
you could go MMA, but a lot of MMA schools don't want to teach their forms. And if you're not learning forms, you're not learning the base root of your martial art. So that's why I say learn a, tradition, a couple of traditional styles and then blend them in. Or if you want to go MMA, get a black belt in one other style and a black belt in another style, then go to MMA. So you mean like say get a black belt in karate and a black belt in jiu-jitsu and then go MMA? Yeah, that's what I would recommend before just jumping right into MMA. But well, what about, say, if I get a black belt in judo and then a black belt in jiu-jitsu, would that be good? Um, no, that's too close together. But well, what if, let's say, I do wrestling and judo? Would that be good? Same thing, they're too close. What about if I did taekwondo and kickboxing and then go into MMA? They're too close. It should be like a purely striking and a purely grappling come together and then you go on MMA not you want to do strictly striking and then strictly striking again and then mix the two then go on MMA. Alright. Now you know even though I study different styles, I I still don't necessarily consider myself a mixed martial artist. I still consider myself pretty traditional but just, you know, aware of modern ways. A lot of more hardcore pure traditionalists, they believe that you only need one style. Do you agree or disagree with that? Um, need, yes, you only need one style, but you want to have more than one weapon in your repertoire. You know, you don't want to just have one style because then you could end up limiting it to yourself to the, just that. But if you really go high up in a style, you start learning other different arts anyway because of how high up you are. The different moves come out. So basically, like, if I go deep enough into, say, judo, I will eventually learn striking, right? Yes, you will. And if I go deep enough into, say, taekwondo, karate, kung sudo, I'm going to eventually learn grappling, right? Yeah. So what do you think happens with some of these people who, well, let's take the ones that we know, Taekwondo. Why is it that a lot of people think that really Taekwondo only has punching and kicking? I don't know why. They just think Taekwondo has punching and kicking. But that must be portrayed how it is on TV. And a lot of the guys that do Taekwondo, that's all, they, they're not getting really high up. How high up are they getting before they think they know it? A lot of people get a black belt and they think they know it. They think that's it. But the black belt is just the beginning. So you think you get the black belt, you should just you should continue on in your education? Yeah, you should keep going. Arts, you keep going. Your martial arts is a lifetime perfection thing. Okay. So let me ask this again. If there's one thing that instructors can do to help people be able to use what they're learning in a real fight, what would it be? Their forms. Why their forms? Because the forms are base roots of your martial arts. But a lot of people say nobody fights like that. Nobody fights like you do in a form. Have you ever seen people pull moves that you've seen in a form? Yeah, I have. But most people don't fight like that, how they fight in the forms how they fight in real life because most people can't fight. And the people that do fight can use those moves in the forms in a real fight. And those real moves, those form, moves in the forms help out and come out a lot, a lot in a real fight. If you practice them enough, it's repetition. Okay. All right. Thank you for your interview, Mr. Person who chose to hold the phone. Hello. People know it's Raymond. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Akon. Haha. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. All right, peace out. God bless America.